Hi friends of Cocktails and the culinary arts. Today's episode is a special one, because I get to work with one of the brightest minds in YouTube's culinary world, the extremely talented Chef Rudakova. Her channel is full of jaw-dropping, molecular gastronomy and fine dining techniques. You've seen me use her recipes when I made the isomalt and chocolate cup garnishes for two of my cocktails, and apparently she has seen the videos too. So without further ado, here's Chef Rudakova. Hi everyone! Thank you for your kind introduction, Kevin. I'm honored to be on Cocktail Time. I love your work too, and seeing how you used my recipes before, I've decided to give you a challenge. To create a cocktail pairing for a dish that I'm working on right now, my favorite Middle Eastern dessert, baklava. Are you up for it? I love baklava and a good challenge. So let's do it. Do you have a recipe for your version in mind yet? Sure, I'll send you the specs over and I'll do a full video recipe on it, as always. Sounds good? Sounds perfect. Let's start. It's cocktail time. I've always enjoyed coming up with small bite-sized snacks to go with my cocktails, so it should be fun to do this the other way around. If you're not familiar with baklava, it's a dessert made of filo pastry, filled with chopped nuts like pistachios or walnuts, and sweetened with syrup or honey. It's very popular in Turkey, Middle East, Greece and many Slavic countries. Let's see what Chef Rudakova came up with. This will really not be your typical baklava, so you'll have to come up with something special too. Coming up with a recipe can take a lot of brainstorming, trial and error, and tasting. You have to find flavors that you're highlighting, pairing with or just trying to incorporate, something that's used, reused or something that you associate with, when thinking about the flavor profile or what you're making. Then you have to find the right bottles, ingredients and techniques to create something you're happy with and excited about sharing with your friends. And trust me, in reality, it doesn't go so fast. I came up with an idea of a clarified milk punch baklava cocktail with a well-aged brandy to give the cocktail nice nutty notes with some vanilla and ripe stone fruits. Pedro Jimenez sherry and honey could be great as sweet components with subtle floral notes of honey and rich full-bodied Pedro Jimenez sherry notes of cacao, caramel and dried figs. Lemon super juice will balance the sweetness and acidity is also needed to make milk clarification possible. To pair it nicely with Natalia's baklava, I'll garnish this cocktail with molasses caviar inside an ismalt cup and spray it with a vodka jasmine tea perfume. I'll show you how to make those, of course. But to make a clarified milk punch, we'll of course need some milk. With food pairings, I try to minimize waste by using some ingredients in both recipes, the cocktail and the snack. So I think I'll need to check in with Natalia and see if I can borrow some of her ingredients. Hi Natalia! Are you making your crazy baklava yet? Yes. What? Crazy? How is your cocktail coming along? I'm few ingredients short. Can I actually borrow your pistachios, please? But I need them for my recipe. I know. I promise to give them back. Oh, and that's feta cheese, right? I could use the brine, if you don't need it. Sure. Less waste, better results. Give me a sec. Now go and open your fridge, it should be right there. Okay. That's amazing. How did you do that? It's magic, my friend. Culinary magic. Cool, thanks. I'll talk to you later. Okay, so to start, I'll first make nut milk with these pistachios and the feta cheese brine will give it some extra flavor. We'll use this milk to clarify our baklava milk punch. Since these aren't peeled, I'll first soak them in water for about 2 hours. Luckily, this is exactly 100 grams of unsalted pistachios. Just what we need. Soaking them will make the peel softer and easier to peel. Nut milk made with peeled pistachios has a nicer color and more flavor. Even if you have peeled pistachios, soak them in water for about 1 hour to make them softer. After soaking, draining, peeling and rinsing the pistachios, with the help of a friend, add the pistachios into a blender. In a pot, mix 250 grams of water with 50 grams of our feta brine and heat it up over medium heat. Don't bring it to a boil, but the warmer mixture will extract a lot more flavors from the nuts. Then if you skip this step, 
pour into a blender and blend everything until you get a nice paste. Filter that through a cheesecloth. Brush it only if you still have a lot of scenes to shoot and squeeze out as much of the nut milk as you can. A potato ricer is a great tool for that. I will dehydrate these squeezed pistachios with a dehydrator and give them back to Chef Rudakova for her baklava. You could use the oven for that as well. And that's our pistachio milk. Even though this is a plant-based milk, the feta brine gives it more body and a bit of saltiness. Anything extra will go in the fridge for later. With that done, we can now give the pistachios back to Chef Rudakova. Natalia, I'm done with the pistachios. You still need them, right? Yes, I'm just making the filling for the baklava. Great. I guess in the fridge this goes. That was fast! And zero waste! Can't wait to try out your dessert together with a cocktail. Me too, but now I need to work on the recipe. I'll talk to you when I'm finished. Bye! Bye! So, now we have all the base ingredients to make our clarified milk punch baklava cocktail. And I'll show you how to make the garnishes while the cocktail and the milk curls in the fridge. I'll mix together everything, except pistachio milk, in a mixing glass. This will be enough for two cocktails, so start with 120 ml or 4 ounces of brandy. I'm using Torres 15, a wonderful 15-year-old Spanish brandy. Next, 45 ml or 1.5 ounce of Pedro Jimenez sherry. This is a rich, sweet style of sherry wine. I love the honey sweetness of a typical baklava, so 20 ml or 1 third of an ounce of honey syrup. I use approximately 3 parts honey to 2 parts water. Check out my syrup episode to see why. Same goes for the super juice episode. Lemon super juice will give it a bit of extra zestiness. 45 ml or 1.5 oz. With this mixed, add 60 ml of the pistachio milk into a pot and heat it up. As soon as it starts to simmer, take it off the heat, transfer to a bowl and pour the cocktail mixture over the pistachio milk. Not the other way around. This is an important step since it makes the milk curdle evenly which may look weird, but this is what will clarify our cocktail and give it a nice silky texture. I let this curdle in the fridge for 6 hours and leave it there for filtering as well, so the oils from the pistachios harden enough to get trapped in the filter. Otherwise, this cocktail will turn milky when chilled with ice, similar to what happens when you chill ouzo. Waiting for that gives you enough time to make everything for the garnish, starting with a special vodka jasmine tea perfume. This will give it additional oriental aromas, pairing nicely with the other flavors. I'll use a sous vide because it will give me the best control over temperature and time. And I'm working with a molecular gastronomist here, so nothing can be left to chance. To get the most flavor out of our jasmine tea perfume, I'll add 5 grams of dried jasmine green tea. Plain jasmine tea would be even better, but jasmine green tea works as well. Then just add 50 ml of 50% ABV vodka. You can up the ABV level with Everclear and an online calculator. Vacuum seal the bag and place it in a sous vide bed set to 40 degrees Celsius or 105 Fahrenheit for 3 hours. This again gives you enough time to make the last two ingredients, isomalt cups and molasses caviar. Let's start with the isomalt cups. Unlike for the isomalt discs I use as garnish for the clarified gimlet cocktail, I'm not heating up isomalt powder in an oven this time, but in a pot. Keep it on low heat until all crystals are completely melted, then take it off the heat and slowly pour it on reusable baking sheet. As the isomalt starts cooling and getting solid, place the baking sheet on top of a bottle so the isomalt forms a small cup. Once the isomalt hardens completely, slowly separate it from the sheet. And voila, isomalt cups. I'll fill them with the same garnish used by Natalia on her baklava, a syrup caviar. For sugar I'm using 30 grams of white sugar, 20 grams of muscovado sugar, with the liquid components being 80 grams of water and 20 grams of feta brine. I'll also flavor this a bit with 0.1 gram of cinnamon and 3 grams of orange peels. This will be a syrup with a ratio of 1 part sugar to 2 parts liquid. With many tries, this is what worked best for me. Heat it up to melt the sugar, then let it gently simmer for about 4 minutes. Take off the heat, strain and weigh how much syrup you ended up with. This is needed so we can add the right amount of agar agar, 1% the weight of the syrup. I ended up with 121 grams of syrup, so I added 1.21 grams of agar, but I waited for the syrup to cool down a bit. This gelling agent is what will keep our caviar in caviar shape. Once the syrup has cooled down, I'll add the agar, then place it back on the heat and whisk constantly, until it comes to its simmering point. Take it off the heat 
and let it cool a bit. This will make it easier to squeeze out single drops from a squeezer bottle into a glass of chilled vegetable oil. Then enjoy the dance of the drops. Once you have enough, you can strain the oil or scoop out the caviar. And it's ready. I have to say, it would be easier to just get this through the magic fridge from Chef Rudakova, but we now have our garnish ready as well. Moving on, thanks to editing, it's already 3 hours since we started the sous vide. So now, all we have to do is cut open the bag, strain the contents through a coffee filter and pour the vodka jasmine tea into a spray bottle. This is ready to be sprayed on top of our finished cocktail. To do that, we'll first need to strain out the curdled pistachio milk from our punch. So let's pretend 6 hours have passed since we placed it in the fridge. I'll pour the mixture over a coffee filter, checking to see if the first liquid coming through is still cloudy. If that's the case, pour this part back over the filter, once you see our clear cocktail coming through. And like we said before, to catch as much of the pistachio oils on the filter. I'll place this back in the fridge and let it slowly filter there. However long that took, it has already passed, thanks to our magical fridge. So let's build the clarified milk punch baklava. First, make sure you have chilled rocks glasses ready, with tempered clear ice blocks. Chill the mixing glass while you're at it. Dump the ice, then pour 60 ml or 2 ounces of our milk punch for each cocktail in the mixing glass. Add plenty of ice and stir to chill and dilute. Once nicely chilled, drain the glasses, then strain the cocktail over the clear ice cubes. Carefully add the isomalt cups, fill them with caviar, then place a small daisy flower or any other edible white petal. Spray some jasmine perfume over the top, and the baklava punch is ready. All it's missing now is the baklava to go with it. Let's check if it's ready yet. Hmm, I see the cocktails are ready. Yep, a quick and easy recipe, but tell us about your baklava. Sure, this is a deconstructed modern version of the traditional baklava, a la amuse-bouche, one bite style, incorporating all the elements of the traditional baklava, like a mix of different nuts, syrup in the form of vegan caviar, and my personal touch, the addition of Greek cheeses like halloumi and feta. And you can see the full recipe, with Kevin popping in for the ingredients, on my channel. I'll place the link everywhere, of course. Thank you, Kevin. And I've already put baklava in your fridge, so you can have a taste as well. Great, I'll send you one of these. Cheers, my friend. Bon appétit, Kevin. Let me know in the comments if this is the most complicated food pairing and collaboration you've seen on YouTube. In the meantime, I'll finally give this a try. You get a jasmine tea aroma from the perfume straight away. That pairs nicely with the sweet, nutty notes and dried fruit flavors on the palate. It's sweet, but still balanced, but you can bring it even closer to the sweetness of the baklava by tasting the molasses caviar. And of course, pair it with the most insane version of the baklava I've ever seen. This looks and tastes amazing. Thank you, Natalia. This has been an absolute pleasure to create and consume. I thoroughly enjoyed this creative collaboration with Chef Rodakova, and you really need to check out her recipe for this delicious baklava and other crazy recipes she's made on her channel. To learn more, you can check out her culinary courses on Skillshare and Udemy. But most importantly, comment below if you'd like to see me challenge Natalia for a part 2 of this collaboration. Another creator I'd love to work with is the newest famous member of the Cocktail Time Wall of Fame. Steve the Bartender. He just finished writing his very own book, Steve the Bartender's Cocktail Guide. I'll leave a link for pre-orders below. Thank you, Steve, for joining our Patreon. And speaking of Australia's prideful exports, there's a special episode coming up, so don't forget to subscribe. Cheers and bon appetit!